I want to just make a video here on my XM177 build. It, I did a video on this. This is one of my first videos I did. I just uh, showed this uh, rifle with a few of its features. I tried to make a clone of the Vietnam era XM177 and I used the uh, SGW AR-15 to uh, to basically build it on and so I'm gonna go over the parts that I used and uh, basically what was done to this gun. The, uh, the SGW gun in its original form is basically was like a clone of the Colt uh, 733 which is like the gun that they used in heat the uh, when there was the bank robbery scene they had those uh, Colt 733s that's what this gun what basically was because back at the time when these SGWs came out was like in the 1980s ish maybe the end of the 80s and there really wasn't people back then making AR-15s like Bushmaster and Armalite, I think they made some. And Colt, obviously Colt made theirs, but they were getting into the like real sporter types. SGW made them. I don't know if they were budget guns at the time or if they were on par with the other ones. They're certainly uh, built pretty good. Like I've never had a problem. I've had a couple of them. But I don't know a whole, whole lot about their history. This is what the markings look like on the SGW. It's just like this. All of their receivers, I think all of their receivers are the same. Like it says Car AR on it. I think my other one says that on it too. I'm not positive. And here's the uh, made in Olympia, Washington. And then it's obviously for the uh, the civilian market, like the the bump here isn't filed down on the one side so I'm gonna go over well this is what it looks like here I'll go over the parts now I'll start from the from the back here this stock is actually not the proper stock the original XM it's like an aluminum stock with a enamel sort of finish over it they do come up from time to time I've seen them but they usually command a lot of money like I think they're anywhere from a hundred hundred and fifty dollars plus if you can manage to find one this one here is actually off of a Bushmaster gun and it's actually plastic it's an exact basically an exact copy of the alloy one except that it's a plastic and it was off of a Bushmaster uh, rifle and I got it the way it is it had the green tape and everything on it and in Vietnam they did use green gaffers tape like that to make camouflage and, and different things so I just left it on it how it was one of the other things is the uh, tube here for the uh, the buffer tube it should be in this gray finish. This is a correct gray finish like that, and it's only a two position stock. It's it's not the, the six position stock like we see today. It should be this exact color is correct, and the, um, the uh, two position only. They used these up until I think mid 90s or something. They only had two position. And then the castle nut just the standard parts there. This piece, the teardrop um, forward assist, I think it came off of a Norenko. I'm not positive, but I think it came off of a Norenko. And, and I, I just swapped it out. And then the standard um, charging handle. The upper is an actual surplus the uh, the upper piece and that's actually how the SGWs come they must have well obviously they did build them out of surplus parts I'm sure this um, the uh, the buffer tube and this upper receiver 
they were surplus parts and that's what they seemed to SGW seems to have just made the lower receiver and they put the other parts just on their receiver and oh and their barrel is different too and I'll try and show that in a minute um, but that's the the upper and the the markings on the upper under the carry handle are there I, I can't remember what the place is that manufactured it's not a Colt upper and then the dust cover I got from Brownells I got a few of these parts from Brownells and the dust cover is one of them it's the it's the proper type that has the sort of like hexagonal um, like the detent there it's that it's the proper it's the proper one and then next this uh, delta ring I got that from Brownells also it's the old style like it's the non tapered old style of um, delta ring the handguards also came with this gun the uh, it's got the proper holes in it just like the original the slimmer they, I think they call it the slim handguards and then it's got the the round like the ring here the, the to uh, hold the handguards and this piece here has it has the rubber I'm not sure in Vietnam if they use it or not but the sling swivel has actual rubber coating on it I'm not positive if they use those in Vietnam or not and then the front sight they on the uh, actual guns so the ones in Vietnam they ground the the little bayonet lug off so I did that on here to replicate it you could still see a little bit of the bump left over when they when they removed it so I cut it off and then uh, repainted it myself and then the it's just a moderator it's not the actual muzzle device that they used this gun is actually a 12 inch barrel it's not the 10 and a half inch barrel like the uh, original guns were the the uh, barrel actually comes up to here inside of this muzzle device like the device doesn't really do anything it actually makes the gun like 10 times louder even for a carbine it it's like 10 times louder it's uh, it's um, it, it isn't the best thing on there but it looks exactly like the one that they had um, I'll show some of the other things oh the pistol grip this is an original pistol grip from the Vietnam era guns uh, I think it came from Sarco back when they had all the Vietnam parts they they had them like super super cheap I think it was like five or eight dollars or it was really cheap and I got a few of them and so it's an authentic grip the magazine I have is an original um, Colt magazine you can see the markings on it um, and then it's obviously for Canada it's only a five shot magazine they're they're pretty good magazines even with the old style follower I don't know why people bash these old followers they they seem to work fine in my opinion I'll show the uh, insides now. So the, everything is just pretty much standard in here. I can't remember if this is the actual trigger that came with the SGW. It probably is. Either that or it, it could have come out of a Bushmaster. And then I have the uh, H-Buff, which I think it's important for the carbines. I always use uh, an H-Buff in them. So I have that in there. And that's that's just basically everything is standard there. It's nothing. It's nothing exciting. bolt 
carrier group is one of these. It came from Brownells when they had their... Uh, I don't know if they came out with these before their retro line or it was around that time anyways. It, it doesn't really matter, but this is one of the Brownells ones in the... Uh, um, I, I guess it's a chrome finish. I can't really remember if it's chrome or... I don't think they finished it with with nickel. It, I, I think that the nickel boron ones are... I don't know if you can get them in, in Canada, if you can get them shipped here. But this is the... I believe it's the chrome one. And that's how in Vietnam, like, this gun would have originally probably had the, the phosphorus carrier. The early guns, the early M16s had chrome carriers like this, but I've read in books and they said that really guns, if parts were okay, they would keep them. Like, when they got away from the carriers and that, if there was nothing wrong with them, it was possible to swap these out in other guns if they got damaged, lost, whatever. You might find, um, like, mix-match parts in them over time. I had to grab my tool. It's next to impossible to get the the delta ring off of the uh, or to get the handguards off with that delta ring is so tight. But this is what the barrel looks like. It's like a heavy profile stainless. It's a fully stainless steel barrel. There's just a slight marking on the barrel right there. It's don't know if it'll show up. It's just an S anyways is, is what's written on it. There's nothing else written on it and I'm assuming it would be an in-house SGW part like the lower receiver and the in the barrel because really that's the only everything else was basically surplus. The gun actually came with the bolt carrier group was a Colt manufactured commercial bolt carrier group that I've I've replaced but that's how thick the barrel is and this is an excellent shooting this is an excellent shooting gun so that's just a look at my XM177 Vietnam clone while I still have it here while I'm still legally allowed to have it uh, uh, well, one thing I, I didn't mention was this sling. I don't really know where it came from. It, it, it probably came off of some other gun. Someone, someone had made it and I just added it to my build when I got it. I, I threw it on here because it suits the gun perfectly. And the, uh, the buckle and everything, it's, it's an original, probably Vietnam era web sling. But anyways, that's just a, a look at my build here, and other than that, thank you for watching.